What happened last night was a pure uh, ambush. Uh, this was not someone trying to bring healing to Ferguson. Uh, this was this was a damn punk, punk, who was uh, trying to sow discord in an area that is trying to uh, get its act together and trying to bring together a community that has been fractured for too long. All right, we're back to work with the former Attorney General of the United States, Alberto Gonzalez, and now joining the conversation, Newsmax political analyst Larry Elder joins us from Los Angeles. Larry, good to see you again. Morning. Mr. Gonzalez, let me hit you this and start right out with Ferguson. There's a lot of people who are now talking about the way the DOJ handled this case. They're saying that the way it was handled, the public manner in which it was handled, they are part of the reason that it is driving the narrative that is not allowing Ferguson to heal and then partially led to what happened there, the shooting of the two police officers. In your opinion, did the DOJ properly handle the Ferguson inquiry? Well, you know, there was so much about the investigation that, quite honestly, I would not have access to. And so it's hard to, it's hard to make that calculation. I know the department was criticized by some uh, for having a presence down there during the initial phase of the investigation. But I try to remind people that, uh, you know, DOJ has a presence there. They were there. They were invited to participate by local authorities with respect to the investigation. And that's why Holder went down there, as far as I know. Um, and his mission, I would presume, would be to, to inform his team, this is important, the nation's watching, let's do it right, and let's work closely, not, over, not, not assume control of the investigation, but work and try to help the locals out. And finally, of course, um, he's African American, and I think this is, uh, uh, there were some very raw feelings in that community, and his, his, I, I'm, I'm assuming he believed that his presence there would soothe things uh, over a bit. Now, where I have a problem with uh, what was said at the time was the fact that I think there was too little credit given to law enforcement generally around the nation. Uh, police officers working closely with community leaders, uh, going to work every day risking their lives, but doing so in a responsible manner. And I, I just felt that the administration did not give appropriate uh, recognition of the service of our police department. Now, of course, one of the dangers of, of, of having a presence there is it may have raised expectations about a subsequent civil rights um, prosecution and I think the department was, uh, there are civil rights laws that exist on the book the facts seem to indicate there might have been a civil rights violation they have a duty to investigate that they did investigate that and I think they came out with the right outcome no evidence here that would support a civil rights uh, prosecution Larry isn't that part of it as well here because there is no evidence that anything happened here that was illegal let's specifically look at the Darren Wilson shooting here because if you look at the report Everything is exactly as it should be, as they said it was in the beginning here. And people are saying that the president, the attorney general, and others are failing still to this day to note that it was a criminal act that began this. Well, Ed and Attorney General, what I find fascinating is that, uh, Attorney General, you were involved in determining the legality of enhanced interrogation techniques, including waterboarding. And the National Intelligence Director, James Clapper, believes, as does uh, Mr. Cheney and Mr. Bush, that it led to actionable intelligence. The Obama administration slams it and says there's no real evidence of that. Fast forward to this Ferguson report. Uh, in, me, in my opinion, in the most uh, bogus of stats, they've concluded that the Ferguson Police Department has been engaging in, as the Attorney General put it, explicit and implicit racism. Don't you find that the two approaches to the way they analyze enhanced interrogation techniques and the effectiveness of that and this conclusion already that Ferguson has engaged in racism, don't you find it inconsistent the way they approach both these topics? Well, I don't know if I'm, gonna, I'm not going to comment on uh, the evaluations of what happened during the Bush administration. I, I think that with respect to uh, looking at the conclusion of the Department of Justice in that report, looking particularly at, this, uh, at the, the numbers, the statistics, I think one needs to be very careful about looking at those and drawing conclusions about what they mean. However, if you look at the numbers on its face, they, appear, they do appear to be troubling. Um, and obviously one explanation for what appears to be the disproportionate prosecutions and stopping of black citizens in Ferguson is economics. Uh, the fact that you've got a, a police department that is probably struggling to make ends meet and they've got to raise revenue. Uh, but, you know, that's a problem for a lot of police departments all around the country. Uh, but I, and I, so I think that the disproportionate numbers uh, reflect the reality of economic difficulties in, the, in that community and for that police department. And when you're dealing with a community that's, you know, predominantly uh, African Americans, it wouldn't be surprising that uh, you'd have a large number of uh, African Americans who would be subject to some kind of police uh, stopping and, uh, and ticketing.
All right, I only got about 20 seconds left, uh, Mr. Attorney General, but it still comes down to the fact that hands up, don't shoot was proven to be incorrect and a lie, did it not? No question about it. Uh, it, it didn't happen. And, and I think people need, need to let go of that narrative. I think we should, we should, we, we should continue to try to, to try to improve communications and relationships in Ferguson, and not just in Ferguson, but all around the country between communities and police departments. But that narrative is a false narrative, and people need to let it go. I think that is absolutely perfectly and well put there as well. Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez, always a pleasure to have you on the show, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, Larry Elder is going to stand by with us because he's going to come back after the break because there are those who believe that the cops in Ferguson still got away with murder. And another comment that has shaken the trees. This one comes from, again, Rudy Giuliani. That and more right here on Midpoint.